Okay, welcome to the second video on navigating Google Earth for farmers. My name is Steve Gabriel. I'm an extension educator with the Cornell Small Farms program. And we're going to cover in this tutorial some of the things you can do as a user to add information. If you haven't viewed the first video, I recommend checking it out. It basically shows you how to download, open, and find your farm on the software. And also some of the layers, essentially the information that's available uh, already in the program. And that can be things like looking at labels, uh, roads, borders. Uh, we looked at how to navigate and things like tax parcel information, um, historical imagery of your site, if any, is on file, and also terrain, which can give you some, some different views. So hopefully you've viewed that video. If you haven't, you may want to go back and look at it first before looking at this one. So I opened up my program, and again, because my farm is, uh, I've marked it as my starting location here, uh, I can double click on it, and it'll take me there. So again, if you ever get lost, um, two ways to get found again. So let's say I'm randomly over here. One is if in my places, I've, uh, again, under view, when I found my farm, I've made this my start location. Then you have a little pin in your menu that you can click on and take you there. Okay. So you have to set that up. The first time you go to your place, you have to set that up. And that, we covered that in the last video. The other way is always in the search pane. If Let's say I get thrown off and I'm over here and I have no idea where I am, is I can just simply type in my search address. And if I'm connected to the internet, it'll take me uh, back to my farm. Um, if that pesky uh, pin with the red, that's something that's a result of a search, is in your way, you can always go down here and click that X and it'll go away. So I'm going to close up the search panel. In the last video, we talked about the layers. So we're going to focus today on what I can create as a user. And if you look at this, basically what we can do is we have my places and we have temporary places. And sometimes when you create something, it goes in that temporary folder. Or if you import data from another place, it goes in that temporary folder. And the things that are in my places, OK, so there's really these two here. These things are things I've created and I've saved, which means that every time I open up Google Earth, it'll be ready for me to use. So it's really important to make sure that your uh, points and lines and everything that we're going to draw today stays under the My Places folder and not under Temporary Places. Because if you close Google Earth and you have all this great stuff in Temporary Places, guess what? It'll go away and you won't find it again. And it's very good periodically to click on My Places as a whole and go up to File, Save, and say Save My Places right there. Okay, and That's important because if you've added a lot of new data and you don't do that and Google Earth were to crash or something, then you might lose it as well. So again, just saving My Places every once in a while is going to make sure all that data is nice and safe. So let's look at some of the things you can do. That's basically the things you can do are along this toolbar here. Okay, and I'm not going to focus on every single one. There's some fun extras here. I want to really just zoom in on the things that I think are going to be most useful for most people. And if you get the hang of these, you're going to have uh, quite a bit of useful information. Okay, so let's zoom in here. I'm going to uh, look at my farm. Remember, I have the terrain data turned on so you can see some of the topography, which I think is nice to give me some visual reference to where I'm, I'm going. And we're going to look at three different things that you can do, essentially. You can make points, so it's a single dot on your map. You can make lines, which would be just simply connecting a bunch of different points. And you can make uh, what are called polygons, which is basically connecting points in a circle or in another shape that are all then shaded in. Okay, it's basically one shape. So what's critical to think about is, you know, again, wherever I put my cursor, there's a longitude and latitude associated with that. And every time I make a point, that's essentially putting a point on a certain longitude and latitude. And that's all we're doing with these mapping programs is we're putting up points. It may just be a single point, it may be multiple points together, but we're basically just graphing that type of data. Okay. And basically what you can do is you can do single points, multiple points, or shapes with points. Okay. That's one way to think about it. Now before I do this, what I want to do is keep myself organized. And you can see here I've set up a uh, folder for my farm, Wellspring Forest Farm. It's really important to put all your data in one folder. You can see I've started to collect a lot of different data about uh, my site and I put each in a different folder. And what's nice about that is I can toggle things on and off depending on if I want to see them or not. Because as you collect more and more information it might become overwhelming if you saw it all at once. So for instance we were looking at the best way to bring in electrical 
uh, into our property. So that's our electric grid uh, schematic here. And you can see a whole bunch of lines, some points, some labels and things when we were actually trying to chart out and figure out what was best for us in terms of if we were going to route the power along this blue line from the road or along this yellow line. Okay. And what's interesting is I can click on the whole folder and I can open up all of those all of those lines and points and labels. But I can also go into the folder and say, well, I just want to really look at this this yellow line and I could just click that on and off. Okay. That kind of functionality is only possible if you make sure you organize your folders right. So we're going to start a new folder just as an example. So if I go up to my places and I right click, I can say add folder and I'm going to call this uh, I'm going to call this my farm example just so you can see what it looks like. So now there's a folder in here called my farm example. And again, as I add stuff, every once in a while I want to click on my places and go to save and save my places. Can never do that enough. All right. Now, if I keep my places highlighted and I go to put a point in, it's going to end up, guess where? I'll just say example point one. It's going to end up in my places, right? But I actually wanted it to go into my farm example. So you need to highlight the folder that you want the data to go into if it's going to end up there. Now, in this case, if I messed up and it ended up in the wrong folder, I can just click on example point one and I can actually drag it into my folder and now it's in there. Okay? So it, it makes your data easier to organize and again, you can also turn, and turn on and turn off different groups of, of information. So let's go in there and if you ever want to delete, you can simply hit the delete key and say OK, and you can delete it out. All right, so let's look at our property here. Um, for reference, we'll just use this whole piece of property. Let's say this was my entire farm here, and I wanted to start just labeling things just to help me out. So again, the first thing you can do is with this, this little push pin up here is add what they call place mark, which is simply a point on the map. So I'm going to label this pond here. I'll call this large pond. Now there's a couple of things. You can see wherever I put the point, it'll give me a longitude and latitude. In this case, it doesn't matter if it's exact. It's just kind of labeling that whole uh, two acre pond that we have. I could change the icon if I didn't like that. And maybe I want to do a water themed icon, which is in this list here. So that's kind of nice. Um, I can add a description. So I can say this is our pond. I can add notes. I could say it was built, I don't actually know what year, in the 90s. It is two acres in size. Okay, so I can add whatever information I want in the description. Um, I can add, I can change the style and color. So I can actually make the label, let's say I want to make it blue. The label is the words, and I can make it bigger, right? That's a little big. I can make it smaller. Okay. And I can do the same with the icon. I can actually, if I wanted for some reason my waves to be green, I could turn them green and I could make that bigger. Right, that's smaller, okay. So that's just mostly an aesthetic thing. Let's keep it at blue, that makes more sense. And it's hard to read that font, so I might make it something like, let's see, red. Maybe red's easier to see, yeah. I'll make it a little bit smaller, okay. So that's points, okay. Now, when I click on that point, you can see the description is actually over here in the menu, but also when I click on that point, it'll give me this information. Okay, and we use this on our farm all the time. I'll show some examples in later films with the paddocks that we've set up. So we draw paddocks for animals and we'll put a point in them and we'll say paddock number four and then we can actually take notes about what date we may have moved the animals into there, what date we may have mowed it, that sort of thing. It's a great way uh, to keep data and keep information. Okay, let's say the next thing I want to do is add not just one point but a series of points to essentially draw a line. So one thing that's not on our farm right now is some of the walking paths that we have. So I'd maybe like to put that in there so I can think about it as we're planning our, our farm a little bit. So I'm going to go over here and select this uh, third uh, one here that looks like a bunch of connected dots. That's your line tool. I find that often this window will pop up. This is really what's setting up your, your thing. I often have to move it out of the way somewhere to draw where I actually want to draw. And in this case, I'm going to put it over here. So we have a path that actually starts at our driveway here. And I can just simply move along and click to form the path. OK, so it kind of goes up through here like this. And I might call that Woods Path. 
Okay. Again, I can change the style and color. So for this, there's just the line I could make it. Let's say I decide to make all my walking pads orange, just so they're really obvious. And maybe I'll make it a little bit thicker so I can see it. Okay. So there's Wood's Path. Okay. And maybe I'm going to make another one to show a different path. And this is Wood's Path 2. And again, I'm going to click and draw the line. Now, if you mess up, if you don't get exactly where you want, you don't have to erase it and start over. You can actually just click on any one of these points and move it. Say, it's, say I did this, and that's not actually where the path is. I can just move it by clicking you know, a different point. If you have too many points, like I don't really need that one, I could just delete it. Okay, So I just deleted a point. You can just delete points, or you can add points. Okay, So that's done there. All right, we have our two woods paths. And let's say I'm like, oh my goodness, this farm example folder is going to get really big. I better start to de delineate things. I might go and hit right click again and add a folder that's just walking paths, right? So that I can take these things then and drag them in there. And then what's nice is if I keep that in a folder, if I close this up, I can zoom out and I can turn on the things that I've started on my farm here. I can turn them off. Or I can go in and I can just turn off the walking path and leave the pond labeled, right? So again, helpful to stay organized. Let's make a third shape. Let's do the polygon. So the second button here is the polygon. That's essentially just a bunch of connected lines that would draw a shape around something. So for instance, if we zoom in a little bit, this is our uh, veggie garden. And it's a circular kind of garden. So I'm going to draw a polygon around it. Now with the polygon, I have a few different options about the style. I don't really like that white. It doesn't really look very good. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll click on the style. Well, let me first write in garden. And I could either just say, well, I'm just going to, if you see the area, I could do filled, which would just be filled in with color. I can do outlined, so that's just the outline. And I can also do filled and outlined if I want to make the outline in the fill uh, a different color. So let's do that. Let's say I'm going to make the fence line. Uh, we'll make that, let's see, we'll make it purple just for fun. And I'll make the area green because it's a garden. Okay, so there we have our, I'll just close this for a second. You can see now we have a purple fence on a green garden. Okay, now I just closed and I said, okay, but what if I want to change that? I just need to make sure I've selected, and I can either do, I can right click and I can get Git Info, and I'm back to it. Okay, so again, if I say OK or I say Cancel and I want to get back, I just need to make sure I've selected it on my list, right click, Get Info. And then I can mess with the points. Let's say that one point is off, I can move those around. I can say, you know what, that purple is kind of weird. I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to have a line, I'm just going to have it uh, filled in the green okay or maybe I will have it lined but I want that line to be a little bit thicker or you know what I don't really like the the green thing so I'm just gonna have it outlined so there's just the outline okay now if you have it filled in let's say in some cases you want to actually see what's underneath it the opacity is basically how transparent your image is and if you go down you actually start to fade out and you can see the stuff that's underneath it it's pretty cool okay so I might want to change the opacity so I'm going to leave it there at about 50%. And now on my farm, I have a point, which is the pond. I have a polygon, which is the garden. And I have these lines, which are paths. Now, I didn't put any descriptions for any of these things. But if I go back to the garden and I say, this is our garden, then actually, if I click on that, just like with the point, same thing. It'll give us information. So again, in a more practical example, I might say, this is our garden. On May 1st, we planted peas. On July 30th, we harvested garlic. This is where it can start to really be practical because you can keep notes in this little description window and now go back later and, and say, now when did I plant garlic or when did I harvest garlic, excuse me? Okay, it's July 30th. Okay, so it can be a really simple way to keep track of some of your records. Um, those are the basic things you can draw, okay? Uh, let's talk one more thing. And you know what? At this point, I should select my farm example. And I should save, of course, right? 
So the last thing I want to show you, save my places, there we go. Last thing I want to show you before we end this segment is how to use measurements in the measurement tool. And this is a phenomenal addition to your, your toolbox here because now you can really use this in a very practical, useful way as you're trying to design and plan your farm. All right. So for instance, when I was trying to plan out, I showed you before our electric system. Here's the electric grid. And let me turn some of these layers off. I love What I love about the layers is if you set everything up, this is a little busy for me. And I can really just choose what I need to see. So I don't actually need to see these property boundaries. Um, that line is a random line I don't even need. Let's see what else. That line I don't need. Um, that line I don't need. And I can just really choose things. I don't even need this. My farm example has nothing to do with this. So I'm just going to turn that all off. Okay, And here are our three options for, um, for electric. And if you know anything about putting electric into your farm, that can be a very expensive proposition. So it might be nice for me to know, well, how long is this line versus this line versus this line, right? So if I want to know measurement, what I do is I go up and I use the measurement tool, which is this ruler here at the top. And again, I need to move this a little bit out of the way. And I could start up at the road and, uh, oops, I have a line so let me, let me describe this. Up here in the ruler, you have a few different options. You can use line. Path would be multiple. Uh, a line is basically just two points, A to B. Okay. So if I selected line, I might be able to measure my neighbor's property boundary here. And that's it. And that shows it's 384 feet. Cool. Okay. Once I've drawn that now, I have the option to clear it, get rid of it. Or I could also save it if I wanted to keep that line and I could put it into my my folder. Okay. A path is when you have a more complex line, which is not just two points. So that's what I have for this electric. So I'm going to trace that with this line. Okay. And I get to the barn there and I find that it's 1917 and a little more feet. Okay. Now if I hadn't drawn my other line, I might want to save that as a reference and I could save it and it'll create basically a new path. Right, so I could say this is my uh, electric option one, and it'll save it in my temporary places, and then I need to move it into my farm folder. Okay, so I put it in there. So again, I can toggle this on and off. Okay, and same thing, you can choose the color, you can choose the thickness, all that. But generally now I know, oh, that's cool, 1,900 feet to get from the road to my to my farm. Okay. So that's useful if you want to organize, you know, figure out distance, or maybe you're digging a line or, or, or sketching something out and you want to see how long that's going to be. We also use that tool, um, but in a slightly different way when we were measuring paddocks for our sheep. So if we go back up to the measure tool, we can do polygons. And we can, let's say, say, well, our, one of our paddocks is kind of like this. Okay. And with the polygon, what's nice is you can actually find out a few things. You can find out the total linear feet. And if we think about how much movable fence we have, we might say, well, that's not actually going to, we don't have 600 feet of fence. So we need to actually you know, make this paddock a little bit smaller because we only have 500 fence, feet of fence. So I'm going to move it till it's you know closer to 500, right? Um, you also get an area calculation. So if I was looking at land and I was saying, you know, how much... How much acreage is this actual field here? I could just simply could find out the acreage of this by just drawing a box around it. And I know now that if I move it out to the really the edges of this field, that that's a, about a three acre, you know, three and a bit uh, acres of pasture. Okay, versus over here, which is, oh, and, and this is the key is if you want to measure multiple things now, if I keep going, it'll just keep adding to that polygon. And I can always delete and go back. But at this point, I'm going to say, mm, I don't need to save that. I'm going to clear it. And then I want to find out maybe how much uh, pat, you know, pasture I have over here. And this one's a little bit more of a funky shape. Okay. But again, <clears throat> I can look at that, and it'll tell me it's about you know two two acres, a little more than two acres. And that if I was to put a fence around that, that would be you know almost 1,500 feet of fence. Right. Very useful part of the tool. Okay, so we've covered points, we've covered lines, and we've covered our polygons, and we've also shown you the measure tool. Okay, we've shown you how to save, 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 so you don't lose your good information, and also how to use folders to organize so that you can choose what types of things are useful. So that's all for this segment. Uh, look for the, the further segments, which will get into some more detailed uses of this software. Thanks.